Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector, and today on the Bones Collector we're going to do a video that we've been wanting to do for quite some time, and it's a top 10 list of the games from Uwe Rosenberg, one of our favorite board, board game designers. And we've been playing Uwe's games for lots and lots of years, and, and we enjoy them. He's, again, one of our favorite board game designers, and his top 10 games will be missing a few things because if you watched our call video... We got rid of some of Uwe's larger games like Feast for Odin and let me see what else. Fields of Arla, Agricola, Glass Road, Laha, and Ort Labor. And so we have other games of his we enjoy playing a lot more because they're quicker and maybe of a more puzzling nature. And we like that kind of casualness when we're playing board games because most of the time we'd like to play two or three games in the same span that Feast for Odin would take. Okay, so this is our top 10 games from Uwe Rosenberg, and this is Lori's. Uh, she, Lori made the list up, so we give her a chance to give her opinion on what a top 10, what her top 10 games are. But uh, number 10 uh, on this list is Bonanza the Duel, and Bonanza the Duel... Tiniest one. Yeah, it's a two-player <laughs> variant of the very popular game, Uwe... Bonanza. Bonanza, yeah. It came out a few years ago, and... We really, really enjoy playing this. You're bean farmers, and it has a very, <laughs> I get, it's kind of a complex little card game, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you have so many things you're thinking about when you're playing this game, and it's two players only. That's why it's called the duel, and uh, this age range says 13 and up, and it's it's pretty meaty this little game, and surprisingly so. And it says 45 minutes on the box, but it can take longer than that. Yeah. It takes at least 45 minutes. Yeah, because you're, there, there's a lot to think about in hand management, and you can actually gift cards to other players, and, and you're trying to lay those cards in a certain order in your tableau, and it's really, really a cool game. I was surprised at how much I like this game. Well, and you have to keep your cards in your hand in order, and you can only play the cards from the right side of your hand. So you've got a hand of cards, but you can't choose from them. You have to play them right to left. So that adds another level of complexity yeah. to so, the game. Similar to Luxor where you have to play yeah. from either side of your hand, but yeah. you have yeah specific cards, a specific way you have to play those cards. This is by Rio Grande Games. Yeah, number 10, Bonanza the Duel. Wonderful game, I love that thing. Number nine, number nine Mercator is a game that uh, we, is a pick up and deliver. It it's an <laughs> excellent pick up and deliver game. One to four players, so it has a solo variant. I always appreciate when game publishers and designers put in a solo variant because there's a lot of people that don't have someone to play these games with but they want to play them they want to and and while we're on the subject board games keep your mind that's fitness for your mind and at our age it's important and we uh, recognize that and so we love to play board games for that reason as much as getting up and exercising and doing those things so yeah one to four players 45 to 90 minutes 12 and up on the board is this different? Oh, Alright, the theme of the game is like the Thirty Years' War in Europe, and Hamburg is the center of trade, and because you could go there, uh, all these warring nations, and peaceably trade goods. And so you have different locations on the map on this board, and all these little tubs that come with it fit right in these cutouts. Not, well, this goes in the red one down here, yep. but... And yeah. each is a different color cube. This is the this is the prototypical cube pusher, <laughs> and uh, yes, it is. So each cube is two types of resources. In other words, the red cube is citrus, fruit, and spice. The purple cube is plums and wine, and the green cube is muskets and livestock, and so on. So every cube color has two values assigned to it, and you're going to use your player board, and you keep track of all of those and you're trying to fulfill contracts and get larger contracts. I think the end game trigger is first person to get a 10 contract, I believe. It's Lori's number nine, and I really, really love this game. Again, it has a big game feel to it, but it doesn't really take that long. I think two players, we played it in 45 minutes. Stay on the box, yeah. 45 to 60. Yeah, I think two players is 45, yeah. which is right in our time frame. We like that kind of thing. and It uses time as a currency. Yeah, so you're taking so that's time off the board. Yeah, that is interesting, you're right. Very different way to keep track of things. But I. You got all these little. It's nice. The little boxes fit in the little. Like I showed you. Yep. And people, nice. if you love pick up and deliver, this is excellent because you have to think about where you're making your move and the most efficient way to move around that map. And of his big box games, this is definitely our favorite. Well, I guess, yeah, this would be our favorite because we, again, call the rest of them. But we really, really enjoy this game. It's. 
quicker, I guess, than the other ones for sure, than a, an oral bore or something like that. But we really love a Mercator by Uwe. Man, we really like that one. It's kind of hard to find, I think, maybe. Yeah, not, not we, easy to get we paid a little extra yeah. for this because you had to order it from somewhere because we couldn't find a copy. easy copy of it. Yeah. Okay, number eight, Newsfjord. Came out in 2018, I believe. Mm, that one's heavy. Yeah. There's a lot in this box, and that's the Newsfjord. And in Newsfjord, you're uh, you know head of a fishing village, and fish is the currency, fishing gold and. Again, this is another game that we can get done rather quickly. So it, once you learn how to play it, it has a different feel to this game. There's a lot in here. Yeah. We have resources that are shaped like what they are, wood, fish. Yeah. And it comes with how many decks? Four different decks, I think, or three decks. Three decks of cards. And you only you only choose from one, so that's a lot of variability. And then we bought a fourth deck. Yeah, the place deck. And it's similar to a lot of Ube's games. You have a board where it's a worker placement thing. You're gonna have three discs or three workers and you choose what actions you want to take on that board. And there's the board. at the beginning of the round, each time you're going to be gathering fish and that's gonna be the currency, it's part of the currency of what you're trying to buy cards with. And then you wanna develop a synergy between those cards you're purchasing in order to get kind of an engine thing going in your village and win Picture the game. Board that you're filling up points. with forests. And Ships go down yeah. here. And then you have cards, just like in Agricola, where you're putting cards out. Okay, then also there's elder cards yeah. that you can get to you know help you and you have to feed your elders so you have to feed your people just a little bit in this game this which uh, doesn't bother us is because it's not an overwhelming feed your people like it is in Agricola so yeah that's new short we really really like this game have grown it took a while didn't it we, yeah it took a while for us to really like this game but I really really enjoy it now it's not a game you can just play one time and make it make your mind up no it has to be played because you don't understand how everything is working together yeah you need to play it a few times Definitely for us one of his better games after we played it like three or four times. Yeah. So yeah, we really learned to how it worked, then we started to appreciate and love it. So give New Short a chance if you get the opportunity to play it. Because it takes a, it has a funny feel to it and it takes a little while to get to know it. Yeah. Number seven <laughs> is Caverna. <laughs> we no longer own. We no longer own Caverna. We loved Caverna, loved playing it and the problem with it was it played seven players and you had a huge box full of components and it was just a pain to have that box with all that stuff in it. If they ever reprint Caverna for one to four, I'm on it and uh, we'll get it back And because again we really really enjoyed it but just for that reason we sold it somebody that had a gaming group and I'm sure they're enjoying it where they can play five and six players which we never do. And We've never played Cave versus Cave. Well, Maybe Maybe we we did. did play it one time at a yeah. convention. I'm sorry, we did play yeah. Cave. It's not the cave. same. <laughs> no. Someone asked me if I would get Cave versus Cave because I got rid of Caverna, and I know it's not as good as Caverna. So I just yeah. I didn't care for it. It was missing some mechanics that were in Caverna, like powering up your your dwarves or whatever those yeah. guys were. You liked that part. Yeah, of the game. I liked that part of the game, and and you could do different things with that. So yeah, I it love removed, Caverna. Yeah, it removed a portion of the game that you really enjoyed. Yeah. So. So yeah, again, if it's uh, which I doubt if it ever happens, but I have enough board games I won't miss anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Cottage Garden. This is the first of a series of three games Uwe was doing that were kind of this polynominoes game style wow. games that you, you set simple. It's a, it's a puzzle, mm -hmm. and you're you're putting that puzzle together all and trying to score as many points as you can. Yeah, tiles. flowers. But this game doesn't get the positive publicity it deserves. This game is a blast. And you have to, you're putting together your gardens and trying to score points in a certain fashion because you can manipulate the scoreboard. This is your scoreboard. Each player has one of these and you put your gardens in that uh, cutout of the L and you're trying to fill those up. And you want to score points so that you can move your orange cube and your blue cube in such a way that you score maximum points. So that's part of what you're thinking about. It's not heavy in any way, but it's fun. And it's got a little wheelbarrow. Yeah, it's one of the coolest game pieces uh, in, in board gaming, a little wheelbarrow. And that 
just follows the trail of pieces around the so you board know. so you know where you're at. Yep. Yeah, and we put our we fill flower, flower pots in there. Pots, yeah. yeah, which are your little onesies you can get to fill in certain spots. And, and it comes with kitty cats. Yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, little kitty cats. The kitty cats. Yeah, pretty cool. I love this game. I love Cottage Garden. And we've played all three. The other ones were Spring Meadow and Autumn something. What was that? Spring Meadow and I always get them confused. Yeah. Forget what the other. Spring Meadow. Autumn Harvest? Something like that. We played the other two and and they were they were pretty good. But this one was more fun and that's the bottom line. So we He kept... likes this one because of this track. Yeah. That scoring track uh, adds something, and, and I like games that do that. And just off the top of my head, uh, Carcassonne the Castle, Mercado by Rudiger Dorn, where you, the things you're doing in the game affect the scoring track. And uh, the scoring track itself has uh, benefits and stuff you can earn as you're moving to certain spots on there, so you have to time and coordinate your scoring. And I really like that because it adds something to the game. As a matter of fact, we have a mini expansion for a regular Carcassonne that put scrolls or something the on messengers the scoring track. Expansion. The messengers, yeah. Mini expansion. So not only are you thinking about regular Carcassonne, but you're thinking about the scoring track and how that's working. So I really love that when, when the board game designers do that. And that's Cottage Garden by Uwe, and that would be our number six. Number five, The Gates of Lo Yang. And I really love The Gates of Lo Yang. Let's see. But we just got this one pretty recently. Yeah, it's not did. a new game, but we just recently this decided is a, to pick it up. Yeah. This is copyright 2018. I think this is a reprint. Probably. Uh, it had been around, and I, I should have looked years. it up. But up with the years. Who cares? Yes. Yeah. But in Gates of Lo Yang, yeah, you're setting up markets and what satisfying customers. You have cards that are certain customers that you're trying to fulfill with. This game is very pretty. Yeah. I mean, with pumpkins and what Beans, all you got in there? Wheat and leeks. Yeah. It's typical. Pumpkins, wheat. White cabbage, that's a little different, and red turnips. And it's a race game. I mean, you're... Here's your little board. Yeah, you, you're not going to score a lot of... Let's see, it goes up to 20. I don't know. What is the yeah. end game trigger in this? I can't even remember. Game in. When should... the last veg is taken from the home field, this is the last round. Yeah. So you are you can only score 20 points. I don't, know, I don't know if it's possible to do that. I don't think we ever have. It's got a lot of cards. You can take loans. There's loan cards. So it's... Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, I love this game. It is my favorite Uwe Rosenberg game, Gates of Lo Yang. And again, we got it late. We were late for the party on that one because we had all those other big ones of his. Mm -hmm. And then we played this one and it's rather quick and tight. We watched it played and sometimes you can learn a lot by watching a game mm -hmm. play. And sure enough, we, when we got it, we started playing it, and, and it shot right up the charts for uh, Uve. This game we can play in probably 30 to 45 minutes, and we really like that, and it's... It well, says 60 to 120. Yeah, we, we play it very quickly. We do. And, but it takes a lot of thought, and it's a nice, has a puzzling nature to it, and it's mm -hmm. over with quick, and it's not a table eater, so we enjoy that. And so that is why it's number five on Lori's list, Gates of Lo Yang. Mm -hmm. You can see all that. This is the customer. You can see the customer cards back here. Yeah. Where you have requirements. Your customers need want specific things. And you got other helper cards, uh, mm -hmm. characters that will help and give you diff different benefits. And it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a, it's a really, really good game. It's a lot of fun. Okay, number four on Lori's list of Uwe Rosenberg. Agricola. This is our Agricola. All creatures, <laughs> big and small version. Yeah. It's only a two-player game. Which, you know, it's uh, a lot of people can't use, but we can. And this is the big box, so it's got all the, got the expansions. expansions and stuff in which it. Which is just a bunch more buildings. Yeah. So, uh, again, this is kind of... It, and it's... It has a tight feel to it, much like Agricola, but the cards are removed and the feeding of your people, which are the two things that really, for us, slowed down Agricola oh. and stopped it from being the game that we really would enjoy. Now, these are the games... the tiles that come with the base game. Then this is one expansion, and this is another expansion. And you only use at most 12 tiles a game, so this is a lot of replayability yeah. in this box. For sure, and of course, what you're trying to do in this game is develop synergy between those tiles, so you have to look at the market, which ones are gonna work best together for you to score maximum points, and it's 
No, you're not going to score a lot of points in this game. Nope. I mean, we were like 28 to 27, or I think we scored maybe in the 40s a couple times. But That's the action selection board. Yeah, it's a worker placement, so you're, just mm -hmm. like Agricola. And then you're building. You're still building. You're still building. You're still building. You have troughs, and you're still putting up fences, and you're still penning in animals. And it has the animal husbandry, so breeding and stuff goes on. Sheep. You know, sheep and horses, cows and pigs. Cows and pigs. Yeah, horses. Fences, putting up fences to corral them in. And, and then your resources are wooden. You've got reed and wood and stone that you're using. So it, it took, to me, it took all the fun parts of Agricola yeah. and put them in a box. For us, yeah. I mean, this. For we, us. Yeah, because we, we enjoy that. I didn't like the cards in Agricola, and this doesn't have the cards. Yeah, it doesn't have the cards, and you don't have to feed your people. That drove me nuts. Yeah. And again, I don't mind having a, a responsibility of doing that. In a game, because uh, like New Store has, you have to feed yeah, the feed elders, yep. but it doesn't hurt to do that, and it's not the total focus of what you're doing like you it is in regular Agricola. Oh, Little Town. Yeah, Little Town. You have to feed your people in Little Town yeah. too, but it's not as overwhelming as it is in Agricola. But this uh, is a 30-minute game, which we like, and again, a small table presence as far as footprint is concerned. Yeah, and if you if you are like us and only playing two player this game is amazing we really love it and again it if you like agricola you will like this too that's it that's a given but it's just a faster version uh, just as again just as strict and just as tight you only got eight rounds and i said oh let's put one more fence post down and have nine rounds because i want to do one more thing <laughs> and that's how you feel in this game i just want one more round you just can't quite get what you yeah, want to do yeah which is cool I and mean, it that, still has negative points which we're just not crazy about negative yeah. points and this one still has that but, but not but not it's not overwhelming yeah so I, and it, it's kind of neat it's kind of nice you use the box that tells you how you how you score your animals. Yeah. It's on the box, so you don't have to. And that in itself can it be up. frustrating because, yeah. <laughs> you know, as you, you probably can't see, but when it starts out, it says negative three. For, so for zero to three of any four of those animals, you have to have more than three to not get negative three points. That drives you crazy. Because uh, you, you're not, I don't know, you're going to have to choose because there's lots of time to say, oh, the heck with it, I'm not going to have pigs, so it's going to be negative three. And then not get the negative three points. You have to have over three sheep, but you don't even get a point until you have eight sheep. So from three to eight, you might end up with seven sheep, and that drives you nuts. I don't even get a point, and I got seven sheep. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And it's it's like that for all the animals, and then you have to get like five horses or six cows or seven pigs in order to get the first point. So that's challenging. That's frustrating. Yeah, you know, it's very challenging. <laughs> but we enjoy it, and you enjoy the strict nature of this game. Again, more than Agricola for us. Uh, Agricola, all creatures big and small, fits the bill. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's our number four. That would have been higher for me. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yes. Number three is Patchwork Christmas. Christmas edition. I love this game, man. This game is awesome. Back. I know all of you, most of you have played Patchwork. And uh, we played it years ago mm -hmm. at a convention, and we liked it a lot. And remembered that. We played a convention and we remembered we liked it. But the quilt theme didn't do a lot for us, I guess. Yeah. It was kind of, yeah. Kind of bland. Yeah. So then you found out they were going to do a Christmas edition. And I said, what? Christmas <laughs> patchwork? Order that. We love Christmas. Yeah. Order Christmas patchwork. <laughs> there's not enough Christmas games out there. We have like two. I think there's ugly Christmas sweaters than this. Animal upon animal Christmas edition. Animal, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot. I need to design a Christmas board game. I need to get busy. But yeah, the board is very colorful. Mm -hmm. And then you put the little presents. On the board. Yeah, like the quilting was... Uh, it was just a blue square. A blue square? Yeah. And here it's presents on the board, so whenever you pass one of those presents or land on it, you get a present. You get a present, and it covers <laughs> up those little onesie spaces on your board. And like in all his games, there's minus points for all the ones you don't cover up. So you're trying to These all look like selectively go through that line of tiles, and you can only pick from the first three, uh, moving that place marker. And boy, that can be very challenging indeed. They look like gift wrap packages. It's very colorful and bright. That, that's really yeah. what I like about it too. And it comes with a cookie cutter if you care to make cookies. Yeah. 
really fun game. I mean, this is this is board gaming fun in a box. Uh, two player only. Really, really cool game. Patchwork Christmas. <laughs> Easy for you to say. If you do pick up a copy of this, be aware there are no English rules. Yep. You have to get on Board Game Geek and get the English rules. I, I emailed them, them and they said, sorry, we don't have English rules. Get them off Board Game Geek. Yep. So. It is definitely worth it. We printed little tiny English rules off Board Game Geek. <laughs> and the rules aren't hard. So once you look at them once. And I'm going to brag because uh, one game recently I <laughs> filled my whole board in except for three spaces. And that's the best I've ever done. That is very good. Yeah. You know, so that's only minus three points. I think it was one point each or something or whatever. But uh, yeah, I love this game, Patchwork. Again, you can throw this thing out of the box, play it and have it back in the box in 30, 35 minutes. And, <laughs> and you're thinking the entire time and having a great time doing it, so. And it's quick. It's the one where you get done and say, all right, I'm gonna do that again. Yeah. Okay, let's do that again. Yeah. It doesn't take very long, let's do that again. <laughs> this is a wonderful group and of games. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, that's Patchwork. That's no, Lori's number three. Lori's number two is New York Zoo. That came out just in 20? or was 20, it, I think it was 2019. 20. I think it was, yeah, 2020. 2020, so New York Zoo. Lori really likes this game, and it has all that. And you know um, I like little animals. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind of full of little animals. Whole box full of zoo animals. <laughs> and this is a race game. Here's the back. You're racing to fill up your board yes. with animals. Yes. And get the, yeah. So you, that's what you, that's how you win the game. First person that fills their board wins. wins. So. And again. Polyominoes. This is your board. Oops. Yeah, so you're going to move your marker around these spaces and it has tiles, your poly dominoes that you're going to choose from once you land on those spaces. And if you land on the animal spaces, what, you breed those, those particular animals can, or something? You, uh, if you land on... These spaces, you pick up the an the animals. Okay. These. If you go here, you would get an Arctic fox and a flamingo. If you pass these spaces, they breed. See how it's got a mom and a dad yeah. and a little okay, baby? Yeah. When you pass that space. But when you pass these breeding spaces, both players breed, not just you. Yeah. So you have to keep that in mind. The only thing about this game that was a little confusing, I thought, is you have darkest green, dark green, and light green. Lightest green and light green. And they're all, I mean, they're different, but they're, they're, they're not a lot different. So we keep them in separate bags. So when we put, because you place them by color, yeah. however many by color and by stacking them. So we, you have to keep them separate or it's kind of hard to tell. When they're all, you know, you can see those are all light green until you mix them in with something else. But it's not awful. I don't know how they could have gotten around that. Maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't know. They'd have to be different colors, yeah. but they're all grass. And then you're, every time you, breed and fill up a one of the spaces that you've put on here you get attractions and they're all different sizes and shapes to use to fill in spaces some of them are big and you need to grab the big attractions yeah well you want to yeah because again it's a race to cover up you're trying to fill this that whole section all those squares in. and here's all your little fast as you go it comes with a tray it's all your little animals you have flamingos penguins arctic fox the red kangaroo and the meerkats, yeah. I think is what they're called. And then the elephant, there's a big elephant, he's your marker that you move around the board with. But obviously Lori really loves this game. <laughs> <laughs> and it is fun, it's a fun game. And again, this is more in keeping with the complexity level of games that we really enjoy to play. And I probably like it a little more than you do. Yeah, but I still like it. Yes, you do. Yeah. And I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun game, and Uwe does a good job with these polynomino. 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 Polydominoes. <laughs> polydomino games. They're pretty good. <laughs> okay, that was number two. Okay, and our number one game by Uwe Rosenberg is Nova Luna. And Nova Luna has a co designer with Uwe named Corne Van Morsel. And Corne Van Morsel, we had a game. Called, we still have it called Habitat. Habitat. An excellent tiling game if you haven't played it. And Beastie Borders. He, he did Beastie Borders mm -hmm. and Beastie Borders. Okay, we have two games. But uh, um, Habitat is probably the one that I think he's probably more well known mm -hmm. for. And a lot of people have played that game. And if you haven't, you need to try it because it's excellent. But this game is wonderful as well. It is a tiling game. And mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a super crunchy puzzle. I, I really, really enjoy it. It's a it. puzzle game, and yeah. I really like puzzles. Yeah. So that's that's why this is number one, just simply for the puzzle, yeah. the puzzly aspect. And you're trying to draw these and tiles this. off the moon ring or whatever this thing's called. And you have a moon, and it moves around. Yep, and you're going to select a tile that that is in that space on this moon ring, and then you're looking at your tiles, and you see these circles with the little colored circles inside them and you have to build that pattern. And that's the puzzle of this game. What's the seven for? Is that the points? That's how, many, that's how much you have to, if you choose this oh, tile, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to move your marker. Again, this game works on time. So if you, if you choose this tile, you have to pay six time. So you'd have to move six spaces. Yeah. And whoever's in the back goes first. It's the same with patchwork. Whoever stays in the back goes first. So if you can play it right, you can just keep being, you keep try, taking your turns over and over and yeah, over. Yeah, trying to take as many turns as you can because yeah. that more turns means, you know, more opportunities. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. a cool mechanism. Yeah, and a lot of games use that mechanism where the person in the back is going to go until they're in front of you. Yep. And they're going to keep taking turns. And I love that mechanism. It's Glenmore and, and uh, Craft, Wagon. Craft Wagon and this. And what was the other one I just mentioned? Patchwork. Patchwork, yeah. So that's pretty cool. I love that mechanism. And this is, game is really fun for us. So mm -hmm. we sit down and play. You can play this on a work night or whip it out yeah, anytime when you just have a, a half an hour to play a game. It says 30 minutes. I yeah. don't even think it takes us that long yeah. all the time. Yeah. If you, I mean, if you have to rush through it, it can take less time. But 30 minutes is about right. And it has a solo variant, so you can play it by yourself. And we really, really enjoy this game. And we got this late, didn't we? Yes. I mean... We, I actually ordered this because we bought something and I needed to make shipping. Yeah. So I said, you know what, let's try Nova Luna. That'll get us up to our shipping limit and not have to pay for shipping. <laughs> and I ended up loving it. Yeah, that was a good choice. And there's another game similar to this by, is it, is it by Uwe? Yeah, Sagani. Sagani. That's new. That's newer. Yeah. But we're, we haven't tried that. We'll one. play that at a convention or something, but I don't know if it would have to be something really special to have it replace this because I enjoy this. I enjoy everything about this. The tiles are nice and colorful, and I like that. And we enjoy building that puzzle in our tableau and our tile laying nature, and, and we really, really enjoy that. And that's Nova Luna. They were able to come up with a really, really nice game. If you like a medium complexity, a tile laying, puzzly nature game, you're just this laying is for your tiles. You. Yeah. You're building like this, and you have to make these little things touch the way they... That needs four red tiles touching it in some manner. So it's... Yeah, so you're... you're yeah, you're thinking hard. I mean, it's... You're going to look at that circle, mm -hmm. that market circle, and, and think which one is going to suit me best. I can only move, I think, three and spaces. You can, you can pick the next three. Yeah, yeah. pick the next three. And, and so which pick one's going to help me the most? Three. You know, how much time do I want to spend? Do I want to take that tile closest to me? But at seven time, that means you're going to go out in front of your opponent, maybe far enough for them to have two or three turns. Yeah, yeah that's you, hard. Yeah, you don't want to... You may do it if it's the tile you really want. You but, have, what, yeah. like 18 discs? Yeah. Whoever places their last disc ends the game. I really like that. So there's no bonus cards to figure in. There's no yep. scoring at you, the end of the game. You're just done. You're done. So you're thinking hard the whole time in the game of how to be most efficient and get there to the finish line first. And that's why we like this well, game. Well, and sometimes everything goes your way and this is just easy as pie. And then sometimes you get tiles that don't go together no matter what you do. <laughs> yep. It's very enjoyable. I, that's why this is my number one. I love puzzles and really, really All like right. this game. Yeah, that's it. We wanted to get that out to you because Again, Uwe Rosenberg is one of the best designers in the board game industry today. He does a really nice job. A lot of people love his bigger games. We like his smaller games. Yep, I was going to uh, say, we're probably yeah. in the minority that we like the smaller games better than the bigger games. Yeah, Most but, people really like the bigger games. But we're older than a lot of people watching, and uh, this ne these next birthdays will be 66 years old, so uh, we do, <laughs> I always say we don't have as much time as the young people. So you, you, they can play those great big games. We like to think in a small section of time rather than a, a large section. But uh, yeah, we, we like to play games in a half an hour or 60 minutes and think hard during that time so that we can play maybe two or three games in a row that are different you know, rather than playing one great big grandiose affair. But hey, that's our list. We really love bringing this video to you. Again, Lori ranked those games and I love them all and we enjoy all, all ten of them and we're, we're glad to have them in our library. So hey, 
Anything else? Uh, if you have any questions about any, any of these games at all, if you have any questions about how they play or anything about them, uh, post it below the video and we'll get back to you. And if you have any comments about the video, maybe you think we missed something in some of other uh, Uwe's games, uh, please let us know. We're always uh, receptive to that, those kinds of comments. And keep on board gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. And we'll see you next time. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, please hit that like button on our videos and, and uh, give them a boost up the, the viewing chain. We appreciate that very much when you do that. And we'll see you next time on Bones Collector. And say goodbye, bye, Lori. Bye, Lori. Bye, bye. See you guys. Love you.